Hey gang, it's your boy Platt, back with a quick little video on a topic I've briefly talked about in two or three other videos, but I've decided to do a whole video on it, and that is decanting wine. The term's decant, D-E-C-A-N-T, and the simplest way to put it is, it's basically pouring, in, in our uh, example, wine in, from one container into another container carefully while leaving any sediment on the bottom of the first container. That's just a real simplified uh, way to look at it. There's a little more to it, and that's what I want to talk about today. Before we get started, though, I'm going to pour a glass of wine. Uh, I have a red blend here from Belvino. Remember, crack. Oh. All right, just pour a little in my glass. And in a roundabout way, we've just decanted. Now, this is a young wine. There's probably not a lot of sediment there, but there's other reasons to do this besides sediment. And I want to go over real quickly what are the reasons, uh, you know, why do we do this, how do we do this, and for what type of wines do we do this for. Uh, first, we do this to help open up the wine. You may have heard uh, people use the term let the wine breathe. And while it sounds kind of silly and pompous, there's actually some science to it and there's some reasons for it. Uh, when you bottle wine, and uh, but this also applies even to, to beer too, to a lesser extent, but things like mead and cider and wine, when you bottle it, even if fermentation's done, there's still chemical reactions going on the whole time it sits in that bottle. And some chemical reactions are good, some are not so good. and until this bottle gets opened, those chemical reactions just kind of stay in there. So we want to pour this out, we want to expose it there, and kind of let some of those chemical reactions kind of out, or the, at least the byproducts of them. Uh, next is also too, we kind of let out, uh, more specifically, any gases. I've talked about degassing in several uh, home brewing videos and how important that is, especially in home winemaking. And I've shown before that you'll be surprised the amount of CO2 that gets produced, and a lot of times that does not always come out. It's not always like the head that we see on beer. That liquid's a lot lighter, a lot easier for that CO2 to escape. Wine tends to be a little more viscous, and thus holds on to that CO2 more. So even though you might not it might not seem carbonated, you might not get ahead, there's still some CO2 in there. Decanting allows that CO2 to release. Also, there's something called sulfites that get into wine. Uh, sometimes if you open a bottle, you might get a little sulfur smell or a burnt match smell, that's the sulfites. When you pour into another container and allow it to open up, allow it to breathe, you lose some of them sulfites. Uh, last but not least, um, again, we decant to separate from any sediment on the bottom. And one other addendum to that, you would also decant if sometimes, God forbid, you snap a cork or have a cork break off or deteriorate while you're opening a bottle, you get a few pieces in there, you don't want to throw the whole thing out, especially if you got a nice wine. So decanting is generally an option. And if it's real bad, you can always filter through cheesecloth while you decant or what have you, but that's always a good option in case you do snap the cork. Now real quickly, I wanna talk about, again, the wine breathing and what, what kinda of happens. And one of the things that occurs is the tannins soften. Now what's tannins? Tannins is a polyphenol that uh, occurs in the skin of the grape. And with reds, we tip it, typically during fermentation, leave the grape skins on there. That's how we get that color uh, compared to whites, which generally are not fermented with the skins. So reds tend to have more of those tannins. Now those tannins can add bitterness and astringency to the wine, but they also add complexity. So we like some of the tannins, but not all of the tannins. One of the ways to soften up the bad part of the tannins, the bitterness and astringency, is again through oxidization, opening up that wine, decanting. So that's what we would do. Now what types of wines would you decant? Generally, and you could pretty much decant any still wine. You obviously wouldn't want to 
decant champagne or sparkling wine because you want the CO2 in there. You, you need that in there. You don't want it to breathe out. But any other still wine you can do. Now here's some just basic rule of thumbs. Generally reds over whites. Remember reds have the skins ferment with them. They pick up more of those tannins than, than a white would without the skins. Also, too, you tend to want older wines, wines that have had sat more, had more chemical reactions. Um, also, too, wines that tend to age longer tend to have some more tannins. And that's the third deal. Any big tannic wine, your bigger wines like your Cab Sauvs, your Shirazes, you know, Malbecs can have quite a bit of tannins. Those you tend to want to decant over let's say in the red world a young pinot noir or a young merlot don't need uh, as much time to decant um, you can decant whites uh, a big oaky chardonnay that's been aged for years you might want to let breathe a little bit now how long would we let something breathe or you know sit you know in a decanter because this is not a proper decanter. You've probably seen the different weird shaped decanting vessels and you pour in and, you know, makes a cool little deal to fancy steakhouse. Uh, anywhere from as little as 30 minutes to an hour to sometimes overnight. Uh, again, younger wines, less tannic wines, you wouldn't need to open up as much. Uh, a lot of people sometimes will just open a bottle of wine at the start of the meal and then get to it whenever they can through the meal. Uh, maybe a little bigger wine, maybe you open pre-meal and let it sit on the table while you're sitting up and then have it throughout the course. And if you have several glasses out of that bottle throughout the night, you can taste until this wine is changed and shifted. Now, what kind of wine would you decant overnight? Uh, probably the best example is a Madeira, which is a fortified wine. Uh, those wines are aged much longer, you know, good Madeira could be 15 to 20 years. So again, so many more years of those chemical reactions um, probably needs a little more time to breathe. You can, like I said, open a Madeira the night before. One of the great things is because it's fortified, you're less worried about any kind of spoilage or anything like that due to the higher ABV nature. So you can let those uh, wines kind of breathe more. But I just wanted to go over real quick the basics of decanting, what it is, why we do it. Uh, now, in the context that I've talked about before, it's primarily just to separate sediment from your wine. Um, it's easier than maybe getting the coffee filter out or cheesecloth. And in the context I first talked about it in my uh, most popular video, Simplest Way to Make Booze at Home, Again, it was just the easiest way to separate that stuff and we're always looking for easy. But today I thought I would do a practical demonstration uh, just so again, folks when they have questions about decanting can kind of see it uh, in motion. I'm gonna set this wine off here. And I've got two bottles here. I've got this one right here is water, but you may see on the bottom I got a layer of cinnamon. I literally just took dirt and pebbles while we're through in there and this is my secondary vessel and we're just going to carefully pour and again imagine this uh probably a more practical sense for us is, is our home brewer arbor and we're just going to carefully pour into the next container now we do got one or two random bits floating and that's all right, that's gonna happen, you know, in the real world too. We're wanting to get a bulk of that sediment out. All right, we can see we still got a big chunk of sediment here, but here for the most part is pretty clear, one or two random bits, and that's, basically decanting right there. We're just pouring from the original container to another container while leaving that sediment on the bottom. This now would, if this was really wine like this is, would breathe, oxidize, soften those tannins, lit out some of those sulfites, lit out some of the CO2. And if this is a 
true decanter, we would not cap. We would just kind of let it sit there, have a nice meal, conversation, what have you, and just go on. But anyway, that's decanning real quick. That's why we do it, how we do it, and uh, again, what kind of wines. Well, speaking of wine, might be time to have a glass. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or video ideas, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.